Bethesda has added three new items to the Creation Club for Fallout 4. Today we'll talk about the Manuel Rifle Set. Big game hunters speak of a legend in the forests to the north, a giant stag that glows as bright as quantum. Pick up the trail and track the mysterious beast with two of the hunter's famed weapons of choice, the deadly Manuel Rifle and Carbine. Each gun features a wide array of modification options to help you hunt your prey in the manner you see fit. Weapon created by Jose McCallum, Shoe Burglar. Quest created by Chris Takahashi. The Manuel Rifle set is going for 400 credits, but is it worth it? Let's find out. Upon arrival in the wasteland, we begin the quest, The Quantum Stag. Investigate the area west of Outpost Zamonja. Once at the outpost, we see that the map marker sends us southwest, and a short walk later, we find a ruined, abandoned house. Inside, we see a small table with a teddy bear on the ground and a pair of handcuffs, and on the table, Stag Hunter's Note. Pop Pop used to tell me a lot of hunting stories, but if I had a favorite, it was the one about the Quantum Stag. The thing about the old man was he loved Quantum. He even had a trick for boosting the concentration. The result was a drink so thick and so heavy that it dyed his beard blue. We used to joke that if we ever ran out of light, Pop Pop's face was better than any lantern. It also made for bad camouflage, so according to him, whenever he went hunting, he'd stop by a small pond and wash the blue out. But that night, the moment he knelt down by the water, the entire surface lit up like a Christmas tree. Except the light wasn't coming from his beard. Pop Pop says it was twice the size of a normal stag, with glowing blue fur and antlers made of gold. Apparently the beast was so freaking majestic, he forgot to pick up his gun and shoot the damn thing. Instead, he just froze like a doggone chowderhead as the animal licked the quantum off his face. Now, Pop Pop was always two ounces short of a pint, so I never really put much weight into the things he said. Of course, that didn't stop me from telling the same story to my boy. Kids gotta believe in something, why not that? But the kid says he's seen it too. I thought he was taking the piss out of me, but then he showed me the tracks. I don't know if this stag has blood full of quantum, but it sure looks like it has a ton of meat. I'm gonna head down to the water and place the bait. The kid's gonna stay up on the roof and take the shot. Hopefully he doesn't miss. The kid doesn't know it yet, but we're out of food. I told him, no matter what happens to me, you chase down and kill that beast. So a scavenger family after the war, living on hard times. It would be unusual for a grandfather to be so fond of Nuka-Cola Quantum before the bombs dropped, and that he would have been able to develop a concentrated formula since Nuka-Cola Quantum was released the day the bombs dropped. He wouldn't have had time to develop such a love for it. So this note must have been placed here fairly recently. And if so, well I wonder if that Quantum Stag is still alive. The directions lead us just north of here. Soon we see a body lying on the ground, but then we get rushed by mire lurks. The body on the ground is the stag hunter, the man who wrote the note. On his corpse, we find two bottles of concentrated Nuka Quantum and the concentrated Nuka Quantum cookbook. Near to him is one bottle of Nuka Cola Quantum, and we find the Lucky Manuel Carbine. Bingo. Critical shots do double damage, and the critical meter fills 15% faster. It's equipped with a standard receiver, a short barrel, the Lucky Marksman stock, a standard magazine, standard sights, and no muzzle. Wow, lucky carbine indeed. And look at this sucker. It's a completely new weapon to fall out. But what about the boy? It's then we notice a trail of Nuka-Cola Quantum on the ground. The trail leads us past the broken house until we see more Nuka-Cola smeared on a tree. Then, following some train tracks, we stumble upon a group of gunners, and we can take our lucky Manuel carbine for a test drive. Huh?
After looting the gunners, we can continue to follow the trail. It leads down the train tracks, we find Quantum on a barrel, and the trail continues south then west on the tracks until we reach Ten Pines Bluff. Following the Quantum Trail up the hill, we find it on a log, and then we find a note pinned to a board. On the ground beneath it, we find some dirty water and a stim pack. We can't loot the berries here, but pinned to the board with a combat knife is the young hunter's note. Pa, the brush is thick here, and the tracks are harder to follow. I've made camp west up the hill. Look for the quantum bottles. Not far away, we see our first bottle. One sticking out of a stump covered in quantum, then another in a dead stump covered in quantum. Cresting a hill, we find a third in another dead stump, and then passing a tree with more quantum on it, we get ambushed by blood bugs. At the top of the hill, we find the young hunter's camp. On a turned over filing cabinet, we find a bottle of Nuka Cola Quantum and the young hunter's diary. I didn't want to shoot this stag, but Pa made me. He probably would have made me kill it too if not for the mire lurks. They jumped out of the pond and scared the hell out of everyone. I wanted to help Pa fight them off, but he made me promise to chase the stag. So that's what I did. The bullet must have grazed it because the stag was bleeding soda. That made it easy to follow the trail to the pond just north of here. I'm guessing that's its regular watering hole, but I'm going to make camp and wait for Pa to catch up with the bait. All we got to do is pour the concentrated quantum into the water and hide for a bit. But I'm having second thoughts again. I get that we're hungry, but I just can't do it. If only I kept an extra bottle. Then I could just feed the poor thing and send it on its way. Maybe I still can. Just gotta figure out the recipe. So his paw got killed by mire lurks, and he got killed by blood bugs. Well, thankfully his paw had the concentrated recipe on his inventory and a couple of bottles. We can loot regular Nuka-Cola Quantum hanging from a hook and then in a toilet. And lying on an overturned teacher's desk is the corpse of our young hunter. On his body, we find the Hunter's Manuel Rifle. Does 50% more damage against animals. It's equipped with a standard receiver, a long barrel, a standard magazine, and a long scope. Since it looks like we'll be hunting a rad stag, we'll go ahead and equip the Hunter's Rifle. We find more Nuka-Cola Quantum on the ground. Following the trail leads us up a hill and over a log until we find a bathtub. From there, we continue up another hill, past a rock, until at length, we arrive at a toxic, irradiated lake. So the hunters would lure the rad stag by pouring the concentrated quantum into the lake. Inspecting our inventory, we only have two bottles, and it does function as a consumable. Each bottle heals 3,600 HP and 200 AP at the cost of 22 rads. And we can read the Concentrated Nuka Quantum Cookbook in our inventory. Concentrated Nuka Quantum. Distillation methods. Boil method. Boil the quantum for 10 minutes or until roughly a quarter of the water evaporates. Freeze method. Cola freezes at a lower temperature than water. Frozen ice at zero degrees can be distilled from the drink. Salt method. Add salt and shake the bottle. Let the salt settle to the floor. The floor of the bottle? The water should sink below the quantum, allowing you to scoop it out. Well, works with alcohol anyway. Since we already have a bottle, we'll go ahead and pour a bottle of concentrated quantum into the lake. The lake turns blue. Now we need to hide. Nearby, we see a small thicket, and we can hide in the brush. A moment later, we see a rad stag emerge and walk towards the lake. But this one's different. This one's glowing blue. We see that Pup Pop was a bit of a storyteller. His antlers aren't gold, but it does look like he's developed quite a taste for quantum. Now we have to make a choice. Do we kill it or do we feed it? If we kill it... <sighs> we complete the quest, the Quantum Stag. On the body, we find a legendary item, four pieces of Quantum Rad Stag meat, and two Quantum Rad Stag heads. The uncooked Quantum Rad Stag meat heals 300 HP at the cost of 16 rads. And it looks like regular meat. 
we find the heads in the junk section of our inventory. They can be scrapped for bone or leather, and the antlers are tipped with blue quantum. Taking the meat and the antlers back to our settlement, we find two new recipes in our cooking station. The first is grilled quantum radstag. Grilled quantum radstag grants us plus 40 to carry weight for one hour. That's compared to the plus 25 carry weight from grilled regular radstag. And it works. Before eating, my carry weight was 370, and after, it jumps up to 410. We find the next recipe under soups. Here we find the quantum radstag stew. It requires one gourd, one silt bean, one vodka, and one quantum radstag meat. It heals 300 HP and grants us plus 50 energy resist for one hour. I looked for the concentrated Nuka-Cola Quantum in the cooking station and the chemistry station, but I couldn't find it. So it looks like the cookbook is just to further the story. We don't have the ability to make concentrated Nuka-Cola Quantum. The heads unlock a new settlement build item, the mounted Quantum Radstag heads. We have two heads, but of course, since it's a two-headed beast, mounting it requires both of them, plus two wood and one steel. The mounted Radstag heads are black with blue quantum on the face and on the antlers. The other option is to feed the quantum Radstag. This one's not flighty. Apparently he's used to seeing humans. Heading forward, we can hand him a bottle. Easy now, boy. Here you go. He gulps it down. Preston likes that. And we complete the quest, the quantum stag. He then lies down for a bit. If we talk to him again, we find an option to send him to one of our settlements. All of my other settlements are full, so we'll send him to the Kingsport Lighthouse. And he turns around and heads that way. See you soon, Radstag. When I went back to my settlement, I found him inside the ruined house. He's pretty big, and his antlers get in the way, so if he does spawn in a small house like this, well, good luck getting him out. We can send him to a different settlement, just like we can move around our settlers. I waited around for a while, but he never did manage to find his way out. Another time I arrived, I found him inside another building. Though, eventually, I did come back to find him walking around freely. So, just be careful which settlement you send him to, he can get stuck. He doesn't add to a settlement's defense, though he will attack enemies that attack the settlement. Also, companions and settlers do consider the Radstag another settler in the settlement. Even after sending him to our settlements, we can always kill him for the meat and the heads. But if we do... Guess this is it for you. Just what the... Any settlers and companions at that settlement will turn hostile and accuse you of murder. It's not right, man. It is totally not right. Have you lost your mind? Now to examine the weapons. The rifle and the carbine are essentially the same weapon, but there is a difference. A carbine is typically a smaller, lighter version of the rifle with a shorter barrel. In combat, they can be issued to troops fighting in confined spaces who need greater mobility. Because of the shorter barrel, the carbine has less range and deals less damage than the rifle, but it has greater ammo capacity. Both the carbine and the rifle are chambered with 308 ammunition. We'll start with the Lucky Manuel carbine. It comes equipped with the standard receiver, and it comes with most of the receiver upgrades that we should be familiar with from the combat rifle. The Manuel shares many similarities with the combat rifle, which we'll get to in a minute. The only receiver mods it's missing are the hardened piercing auto receiver and the .38 receiver. So there's no option to rechamber the weapon. So you can use this as a sniper rifle or as an automatic rifle. It has a similar barrel selection to the combat rifle. The major difference is that the short and long light barrels are missing and instead they've been replaced with a medium and medium ported barrel. Unlike the different receiver options, the short, medium, and long barrels do look different, naturally because they are different lengths. Next, we find a number of familiar stock options. And here's where it gets weird. It comes with a unique stock called the Lucky Marksman stock. It has the same stats as the Marksman stock, but grants two luck 
Which is weird because on the reverse side of the Lucky Marksman stock, we find two black eights and two black aces. In poker, this is known as the dead man's hand. And that's because legend has it that Wild Bill Hickok, an old folk hero of the Wild West, was holding this hand when he was shot in the head and killed by a rival gambler. Doesn't seem like a very lucky hand to me, so why it would be on a lucky carbine? Well, I have no idea. So the luck legendary effect from this weapon comes from the stock, and we can remove it. We can downgrade it to a short stock, which looks like this, a full stock, which looks just like the short stock, or the marksman stock, which looks just like the lucky marksman stock. Removing the lucky marksman stock does remove the luck bonus. Here's my character wielding the weapon with the lucky stock attached, 12 luck. Then if we remove it and re-equip it, it goes down to 10. Also of note, when we have the lucky stock attached, it says that our range has been reduced to negative one. But I'm not sure if this is accurate, because when I use the weapon with the stock attached, my range does not seem to be affected. It has three magazine options. It comes with standard, but we can upgrade it to large or drum magazine. For sights, it has standard, which it comes with, and it looks like this. Improved, which looks like this. Glow, which looks like this. Improved Glow, which looks like this. Reflex Circle, which looks like this. And then it comes with some new scopes that have completely unique designs. The short and long scopes both look like this. They're thin with a coppery appearance, unique to the manual, they look great. And then both the short and long night vision scopes appear to be scratch built. The tube is much larger with a light blue or oxidized copper bit at the end. Finally, it's got the short and long recon scope and the recon scope for the Manuel Carbine has a new texture. It's solid black instead of the tan color of the recon scope we're familiar with. As for muzzles, it has a large bayonet which improves bash damage, and it looks great at the end of this carbine, complete with a dangerous stabbing animation. Then there's the Compensator, which is the best looking muzzle in my opinion. I haven't seen a Compensator that looks like this on any other weapon in Fallout. It has a rounded bulbous end that tapers towards the barrel, and it's a gunmetal black to match the barrel. Then there's the Muzzle Brake. It has a more squarish appearance. And finally the Suppressor, which is very long. The Hunter's Manuel Rifle has all the same receivers, magazines, and scope options as the carbine. However, we can't modify the stock, and we can't modify the muzzle. It does, however, have one new barrel not available with the carbine, the suppressed barrel. The suppressed barrel looks really cool. It's huge! And like the suppressor for the carbine, it suppresses noise from each shot fired. As beautiful as this thing is, there are some visual flaws with it. Because the barrel is so thick, our character's fingers clip into it while holding it. This isn't something we're normally to see because the weapon hides the fingers on our left hand in first person view, and even in third person view, our body never moves out of the way so that we'd see these fingers. Really, we'll only see it if we look back at our character for screenshots. The barrel also wreaks havoc with all iron sights. As you saw earlier, the iron sights worked fine on both the carbine and the rifle, but with the suppressed barrel attached to the rifle, the front and rear sights don't line up, effectively making them worthless. There was a similar problem with the handmade shotgun when it was first released, and they eventually fixed it, so we can hope that they will eventually fix this as well. The carbine is a thing of beauty. This, I think, is one of the best looking weapons I've seen for Fallout 4. Certainly that's come out of the Creation Club. And that long scope is just gorgeous. My favorite combination in terms of aesthetics is with the long scope and the compensator. On the left side of the weapon, there's a brand stamp. We find this only on the carbine. It's not on the rifle. We see two crisscrossing muskets and it reads Manuel Arms Company. I think the Manuel Arms Company is unique to the Fallout universe. I think they invented it just for this creation. I did a bit of searching and I couldn't find any reference to any Manuel Arms Company outside of references to this creation. The closest real world weapon I could find to the Manuel Carbine and Rifle here is the Mondragon Rifle from 1908. This weapon looks a lot like the Manuel Rifle and includes many of the same magazines that this one does, including the drum magazine. And it was developed by a Mexican soldier named Manuel. I think that's a bit much for it to be just coincidence. 
Even though the Hunter's Manuel rifle shares many similarities to the Manuel carbine, it is a bit different, mainly due to its limited stock options. The all-wooden stock looks distinct, as do the different barrel options. I said earlier that the Manuel rifle and carbine are very similar to the combat rifle. That's true in some of the types of mods it has, and it's also true concerning its sound effects and firing animations. Sadly, this creation does not come with new sound effects. It simply copies the firing sounds from the combat rifle. And it shares the same firing animations, which does become a problem. It's not that noticeable, but sometimes when firing the Manuel rifle, we've got a bit of a hovering hand issue. And that's because it's using the combat rifle firing animation. Another problem is that the bolt is on the left side of the weapon. This is a common issue in first-person shooters. It's done for artistic reasons. As a player, it's pretty cool to be able to see your character open the bolt, which you normally wouldn't be able to do if the bolt was on the right side of the weapon. And so for the sake of coolness, developers will put the bolt on the left side of the weapon, which is why magically every single hunting rifle in Fallout 4 is a left-handed version of the gun, wielded by a right-handed sole survivor. But this becomes a bigger problem with the Manuel rifle, because it still ejects its shell casings out the right-hand side. Which, on one hand, makes a lot of sense. You don't want hot bullet casings flying in your face if you're holding the weapon to your right. But with the bolt on the left side of the gun, the casing would have to pass through the middle of the receiver to be flying out of the right-hand side. So they either should have ejected the bullet casings to the left or, ideally, moved the bolt to the right side of the gun. We can find more Manuel rifles by visiting some of our favorite weapon merchants. Heading to Clio, I found two standard Manuel rifles and two short Manuel carbines. Heading to Diamond City, on Arturo, I found one Manuel rifle and one short Manuel carbine. So from vendors, we could equip our companions or settlers with these weapons. And that's it for the Manuel rifle set and the Quantum's Tag. I'm pretty thrilled with this creation. They could have just dropped the weapon in our inventory, but instead the quest associated with it made sense, helped explain the lore of the weapon, and gave us some options. I don't think the Radstag respawns, so we really do have to choose between mounting his head on the wall and making a couple of stakes, or sending him to a settlement as a pet. For 400 credits, I'd say it's worth it, mainly because this is exactly the kind of weapon my character will use. I've been using the lever action rifle from Far Harbor for the longest time. I really wanted to like the anti-material rifle creation, and I do like it, but ultimately I haven't used it with my character because first it's too weak compared to my lever action rifle, and I just wasn't thrilled with the sound of the anti-material rifle. It just sounded too weak for the kind of weapon it was supposed to be. That's a problem here as well. I wish the Manuel rifle had its own unique sound effects. But that's just a small complaint on my end, because it's still so beautiful to look at. So for me, this is exactly the creation I wanted. But what are your thoughts? Is it worth it to you? Are you gonna cook up some quantum radstag? Or send him to a settlement? And if so, which one? Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. There are two more creations with this latest update, and I'll be sure to cover them. So if you don't want to miss them, be sure to subscribe and to click that bell notification button. If you have and you still feel like you're missing out on YouTube notifications, consider following me on Twitter at Oxhorn. I update Twitter manually with every new piece of content that I publish. I've got a new shirt in the shop. No dice. Celebrate your lack of luck or mine with this new shirt about everyone's favorite perfectly preserved pie. With this shirt, you can now remember all the times you've failed at getting the pie every time you look in the mirror. Just what you've always wanted, I'm sure. This design comes on shirts in a variety of men's, women's, and children's sizes and in a wide array of colors. You can find it on other products as well, like smartphone cases, pillows, posters, mugs, stickers, prints, etc. So if interested, you can find a link to my shop in the description below, or you can click here. If you like what I do, and you want to support me in a more personal way, consider becoming a patron on Patreon or a member here on YouTube. But more than anything, I'm just so glad you're here watching this video with me today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you soon with more brand new videos.